Good morning to you guys in the Pacific Standard Time and good afternoon to people from Georgia, all the places in Central and uh, East. And um, so we already started getting questions. Yes, so I'm going to get started here. Um, again, good morning, good afternoon to all of our participants, welcome to our bariatric webinar. Uh, we do this um, every, almost every month and uh, it's been very successful. Um, we will cover topics on bariatrics and medical tourism and we would let participants ask questions at the end and we do a raffle. Um, so, uh, if you have not submitted a health questionnaire from our website, which you can find on MexicoBariatricsCenter.com, uh, please go ahead and do that. And um, for if you have done it before, you don't need to redo it again. If that's your first time, please select Dr. Alejandro Gutierrez to be able to enter our $2,000 off of surgery raffle and wa uh, watch the webinar to the end. That's a requirement for you to be present throughout the webinar presentation and we will do the raffle at the end. Again, if you have submitted the HQ before, you don't have to do that again. We will just switch you to Dr. Gutierrez if you win the raffle. Normally, we try to answer as many frequently asked questions that we feel that a lot of patients ask during our presentation. Um, so please pay attention so we don't have to repeat the same answer. And also, if you don't hear the answer to your questions, of course, you're welcome to post it in our Q&A tab, and we will cover it at the end of our presentation. Here's the topics that we are covering today. Basically, we want to say what is obesity? What are the risks associated with obesity? Weight loss surgery, which we um, abbreviate WLS, and MBC, which is Mexico Bariatric Center. We talk about Mexico Bariatric Center. What is it that we do? And we know what we're doing. Then we cover bariatric surgery, which is gonna be laparoscopic versus endoscopic options and all the procedures that we offer that exist out there. Of course, we talk about our bariatric, emerging bariatric vitamins and we open up for Q&A at the end. So um, Mexico Bariatric Center, which we abbreviate NBC, has been in business since 2012, and we have performed over 20,000 successful surgeries, and we have had seminars throughout the US and Canada from the inception, and also uh, after pandemic, we switched to webinar, and we've been doing that every month with the raffle at the end. So, Obesity is a chronic disease that is growing worldwide. Um, human being is not used to um, high calorie food and lack of physical activity. And we have no defense against sugary drinks and what they call ultra processed foods. Obesity basically can be attributed to genetic predisposition or genetics is important, the environment we live, the way we were brought up, our developmental history. These are all factors. And of course, um, the increased nutrient content of food, lack of physical activity in stress, which we 
do comfort eating to compensate for that. And inadequate speed, uh, sleep is one, one of the factors. And of course, the drugs that we take, some of them are causing weight gain. So these are all the factors that are we are exposed to. Um, as a definition, they came up with a formula that you plug in your weight and height and you come up with a number. Any number below 25, you are considered to be healthy. After 25, you start being in the overweight and after 30, being obese. And of course, this chart goes on and on to super obese and super morbidly obese, super, super morbidly obese. And about one of the advantages of going with our center is the spectrum of services we provide from laparoscopic to endoscopic to all the revision surgeries and the how, how, how high of a BMI we can cover. We have done patients with a BMI over 100. So that's huge to be able to offer that service. When we gain weight, are actually our fat cells or we, what, we, what they call adipose tissues is not only increased in numbers and increased in size, also the structure of the fat cells is changing. And that is what it basically are fat cells or for body doesn't function the same because of the structural change in the fat cell. Now we're not gonna be sensitive to insulin, diabetes type two. We're not gonna be in sensitive to leptin, which means we're not, when we eat, we're not getting satisfied. We don't feel full. Um, even the therapies doesn't respond well when you, you have the fat cell structure change when we gain weight. And also vaccination are not as effective. Obesity, like we said, is a major risk factor. 40% um, of adults in America are considered obese. I always like this animation, which shows what happens when we gain fat as far as our breathing concern. So let's look at it. Look at this. Giant one of the major muscles. So that's, that's a, one thing happens. There are so many different uh, side effects of gaining weight, and that's one of them. Um, of course, heart disease, cardiovascular disease, stroke, lung, lung disease, like we mentioned, diabetes type two, these are all side effects. Um, blood clots, inflammation, sensitivity to leptin insulin, like we mentioned, and impaired immune system. Uh, during COVID-19, uh, we we found out that being obese is a major risk factor for getting infected and end up in the ICU and end up in the hospital and actually die from it. And the reason is the more fat cells you have, you have more breathing ground for the coronavirus to attach itself to and get you infected. Um, so, okay, well, we all found out that we need to live a healthy life, especially after COVID, and lose weight to be not susceptible to diseases such as coronavirus. And uh, so diet and exercise has been, a, has been there in the history. And that's the first thing we go to when we wanna lose weight and get over our weight problem and trim down. So diet and exercise is great. We will see why diet actually sets your body to 
not burn calorie and actually crave for more food, but exercise, we're talking about boot camp type of exercise. So this is extensive exercise. And diet and exercise is great. You always have to eat well. You have to exercise even with weight loss surgery. You still need to be active. So, and it's good for you. It's good for your heart. It's good for your lungs. It's good for your mind. But it's not a proven long-term solution to cure obesity. And so that's one option. The second option you look at is pharmaceutical. Um, so there has been ozempic injections that has been around for a few years that we will cover a little bit. And uh, there are diet pills. Um, so there are fat burning pills and all the other diets like Atkins and Weight Watchers. And those are again, are not a long-term solution for obesity. Um, so you have to take, keep taking them. So, and if, if you stop, you actually regain and more the weight that you lost. So the only, at this present, the only proven fast, rapid, safe, and long-term solution is bariatrics, which is, of course, you know, beside diet and exercise, this is the most um, organic or natural way to lose weight because what you do is you make your stomach smaller so you eat less and you also change your hormones so you don't get as hungry as before. Um, <laughs> this morning, I just um, grabbed the side effects of Ozempix from their website. Um, as you see, there are um, problems with thyroid tumors. You can get cancer. Um, you know, certain condition, you can take it. Inflammation of pancreas. It keeps actually talking about pancreas. The uh, changes in vision, um, kidney problems. So again, when you are taking medication, no matter what medication is, it's going to have side effects. And especially when you change, when you try to be the medication to change your hormones, it also is, is changing, is messing with your mind and your brain. That's another factor that you have to look into. So we talked about diet and exercise. So why is diet and exercise is hard. This is a good picture to show as like a runner trying to get to the weight loss goal and he has to go through these hurdles. And so the first hurdle, like we talked about, when you go on diet, your metabolism goes down. Your hunger goes up and your satiety again goes down. So these are the hurdles that you have to pass. So that's why when you go on diet, your body pushes back and try to resist. So this um, explain also this picture shows the difference between what happens when you go on diet and exercise and what happens when you actually get the surgical treatment for obesity which is weight loss surgery or bariatrics. So our body, the way it works is our uh, brain is interacting with our gut hormones. And this is how the whole, you know, getting hungry, eating, these are all basically functioning the way it's functioning in our body. So let's say if an individual weighs about 250 pounds, of course, you know, this individual is all, overweight. So at that, at that weight, the brain, the body, the hormones, the metabolic thermostat of this person, of the individual is set at that set point. Now, if you go on extreme diet and extensive exercise, we talk about boot, boot camp type of exercise. What happens is your body is going to resist by increasing your hunger and lowering your metabolism. As for as the, 
the individual in the green has had weight loss surgery, the minute that the individual wakes up from the from the operation, the brain sees you at a lower set point because your hormones are changed. And therefore, your body is going to have the metabolism goes up and the hunger goes down. So it helps you lose weight rapidly and keep it off permanently. That's the difference. So if you are basically having no coverage for, for weight loss surgery, or you are, you know, um, even if you're insured, but the insurance is giving you a hard time, the deductibles are higher because our packages are, are so uh, affordable that it actually is less money than if you were to pay out of pocket to get surgery in US. So that's why, of course, in, can, in the case of Canadians, they do get it for free, but then the wait for the, for the operation is almost sometimes two, five, seven years. So they come to us to get this life-changing procedure. Um, so the question is medical tourism. You go out of your country, out of your city to get a procedure that is affordable and is high quality. Um, of course, when you are going, um, you know, in a different country, so you want to make sure that you are in safe hands. Um, actually, this comes from CDC, which is the Center of Disease Control and Prevention that recommends that you work with a travel medicine provider, which is the facilitator for somebody to pick you up at the airport, somebody who arranges for your hotel, somebody who takes you around. And also the quality of care is important. So, um, so basically once you are deciding to go with medical tourism, now you have to worry about the logistics and then the medical care part of the um, package. NBC has been offering high quality medical care, the VIP treatment since 2012, like I mentioned. And when you come with us, we do all the movement for your hotel, transportation. We work exclusively with a network of doctors that are proven that have thousands of surgeries behind them and they know what they're doing. So you're not going with a company who is just formed a few years ago, doesn't know, doesn't have the infrastructure to do all the transitions for you. Of course, as we see, you know, the social media is a, is a great tool, but also it could be deceiving. It could be, um, you know, if you put a before after pictures or something on Facebook or Instagram, it, it doesn't show the whole the whole story. It just, you know, there are there are actually before after pictures that has been fake. So there are. So basically, you want to do more research than just looking at social media and things like that to see the company's reviews, the past patients, how they're doing, you know, what's the success rate? What's the complication rate? So we recommend that you do your research. Um, we are a US corporation and our office is in Sacramento, California. Of course, we have um, people that work with us in our team in, in Tijuana, Mexico as well as Guadalajara. Since inception, our uh, goal has been to provide highest quality weight loss procedure for most affordable prices. So these are the items that we come up when you say, why choose NBC? 
um, our reputation, our reviews, um, we match the patient to the right surgeon for the right procedure. That's huge. And we have a wide range of procedures that we offer. We not, we're not limited to just do sleeve and just do a lower than 45 BMI bypass or, or not being able to do DS or do certain revisions and make you do a procedure that is not best for you. Um, of course, our surgeons, most of them are double board certified. And um, again, you can go through this list. We do give you lifelong care and support. Um, we do surgeons load management, which we go over later on. Uh, we are a Better Business Bureau, A+. Plus. We belong to Medical Tourism Association. Um, we do have a nutritionist on our staff here and a U.S. surgeon liaison on which we go over what, um, what's going to be like. So in continuing uh, to be committed to provide high quality uh, procedures and quality of healthcare, we have started a project which we called Hospital Azar. And this hospital is gonna be hopefully ready in a couple of weeks, maybe four weeks, hopefully. Um, this has been a project for over two years and it's been our vision for a long time. And this is a game changer. Hopefully we get it started soon and we can all move on to this center. Um, some highlights of the surgical center is 35,000 square feet of hospital in, within three floors, um, very close to Hyatt place and very close to the border. We will have four operating rooms, 40 plus rooms. Of course, the view from the top floors are great. Every patient room has glass, and um, view of outside. Uh, of course, you will have in-house laboratory, in-house intermediate ICU, x-ray department, and pharmacy. These are some of the pictures of our center that we are working on. Okay, well, do we have a little video of the center? Again, it's not ready, but we can see what it's like, look like. Um, just, um, think on, okay. Every time you play video, oh, you have to go. This is early on in the project when we were visiting the site with Dr. Valenzuela. This is back in the pandemic. We all had masks. Um, so again, we've been in the medical tourism for over 10 years, 20,000 plus surgeries and seven top 
surgeons down there. The all-inclusive packages that we offer include the surgeon fee, hotel nights, pre-op post-op tests, medications, hospital fees, nutrition support, transportation, aftercare, surgeon liaison. And another new feature that we offered since um, end of last year is what we call MTI, which is medical tourism insurance. We have negotiated with the top provider for this insurance, which we co which it covers. We will go over this slide a little later on that uh, it covers a lot of the travel and complication in case you need it um, at a very affordable price. So I recommend that you look into that. Again, based on the procedure, we will keep you in the hospital for two nights. Uh, well, for gastric balloon, one night. For sleeve, two nights. For bypass DS, three nights. And um, one night when you first come in, you will stay in the hotel with us. Um, our process is very simple. It's like one, two, three. You fill out the health questionnaire. You choose the surgery. Once you get approved, we get the deposit, we add you to the calendar. And the last step is basically arrange for your travel there, whether you fly or your drive, and finish the paperwork. One of the ways we support patients is through our support groups on Facebook. We have um, the major one that is all past patients, over 10,000 10, patients there. And we have another group, which we, for people who are starting to look into the pr procedure, of course, some of the past patients are still there. That's about a few thousand patients there too. And of course, we have our public Facebook too. And um, we have a team of past patients that are helping us and we are very grateful to them. Um, Sarita has been with us for, I don't know, maybe seven years. Rena, Don, um, Kelly. So, um, and uh, yeah. And, um, you know, unfortunately, um, we lost Judy recently and um, she was battling with cancer and um, we're very sad about that. Um, so, you know, this was unexpected. We just heard that a few nights ago. Um, Rena and Sarita uh, have been doing a podcast, which has been great. Again, that's another way that we've been supporting patients throughout their journey. Um, again, uh, once you are, once you are added to the calendar, you, we provide all the information about when to fly, how to get there, how, what to expect from transportation. We want you to actually arrive before 12 noon because that gives us enough time to do all the pre-op tests and don't have to rush around. And we want your departure time to be after 2 p.m., which is, um, again, it gives us enough time to get you across and you be two hours ahead so you can go back you know, to the airport and be comfortable catching your flight. For people who joined later, if you have not done a health questionnaire online, please go on and go on mexicobariatriccenter.com and fill out the HQ. Again, if you have done it before, you don't have to do it. And it's required that you watch this webinar all the way to the end to be qualified to enter our raffle for $2,000 off of surgery. We talked about the exclusive network of best bariatric surgeons in Mexico. Um, these are the seven, uh, Dr. Miguel Montalvo, Louisiana, Valenzuela, Alejandro Gutierrez, which we have a pleasure to have him to, here today, and Dr. Rodriguez Lopez, Jacqueline Usuna and Jesus Seha.
So we take pride in our um, qualification process. You, when you submit your healthcare questionnaire, we take that in our surgeon liaison, which is actually a bilingual medical doctor that has been working with us eight years, is sitting and reviewing every of these HQs submitted with the surgeons. The, if you have an, um, you know, just a simple, maybe a BMI of 35, the sleep is not so complicated, but any situation that is not straightforward, you get forwarded to the surgeon that is capable of best handling that situation for the type of surgery, for the condition you have, for the BMI you have, all that is considered when we're distributing this HQs to the surgeons. And a surgeon liaison is actually sitting there and reviewing every one of these HQs. So we make sure you are matched with the best surgeon for the best procedure. Our pre-op diet is basically step forward based on BMI. If your BMI is close to 30, all you have to do is a two-day clear liquid, and it goes up from there to one week, two weeks, three weeks, four weeks. And probably Dr. Gutierrez is going to go over this in detail, that how important the pre-op diet is. Basically, what you do is you shrink your liver, and you give yourself more room for the laparoscopic procedure. The better job you do, the better outcome, easier the surgery on you and the surgeon. Um, again, um, we use Hyatt Place and Fairfield when we have overload in Tijuana. Uh, when you arrive, basically, once we do the pre-op test, we want you to go to the hotel and relax and be ready for the next day's surgery. Of course, we provide broth, jello, and ice chips for you when you are on the pre-op and post-op diet. Your companion gets a free breakfast, which is very nice. On the day of the surgery, you show up in the lobby, we pick you up, we take you to the surgery center for your procedure. And you stay there based on your procedure so many nights. We do the test, leak test. We make sure everything is okay before we release you. Now you're ready to fly back home. Um, and again, if you fly long distances, we recommend that Definitely use compression socks and also, um, you know, you can stay another night extra. You can talk to your coordinator about that to arrange for your stay. Uh, one thing I need to mention is companion stays in the hotel first night with you, of course. And once you go to the hospital, they stay back in the hotel, we come and visit you. So we talked about why MBC. One of the one of the reasons we have been so successful with outcome and the complication rates is what we call surgeons load management. For every surgeon per day, we only book so many patients. So we don't overbook surgeons. Of course, you know based on the type of surgery, the, com the complexity of the surgery, we book them according to the surgeon's load. And that's why our success rate is so high and our complication rate is actually less than 0.5%, less than 1%. And what are the surgery options? So um, let me go back to that. Um, let me introduce Dr. Alejandro Gutierrez. Of course, he's a well-known surgeon. Um, I know a lot of patients ask about him. He is um, you know, a world-renowned surgeon, but um, 
I just want to touch base on his qualifications. He is one of the few double board certified bariatric surgeons in Mexico, in Tijuana. And um, he's been studying in, in Baja, California. And he's been with us for how many years you have? Um, I think uh, almost eight, eight years. Yeah. Uh, yes. a little more yeah yeah so he probably has about 5,000 surgeries behind him he and uh, he's proven his his technique his outcome is is um is proven so I'm going to let you talk about take over here and talk about what are the options we offering in our center and then we talk about all the different procedures thank you for taking over here Okay. Oh, uh, thank you. Uh, thank you all for uh, um, being here. Good morning. Good afternoon to some of you. Uh, uh, thanks for taking your time. Um, we're gonna go and and review some of the surgeries that we, that we do. Um, we do our, our primary bariatric revisions and then our revisional uh, revision. Revisional is when uh, you already had a, a previous surgery and uh, you regain weight. Uh, you had acid reflux or, or some other uh, problems. And then we can convert it to another one. We have um, obviously we have the lab band still. We we do it, but uh, it's it's decreasing in in uh, percentage uh, because right now we have more technology, better surgery. So uh, the most um, common surgery right now is the gastric sleeve. Obviously, we have we can have a a, a different uh, kind of that's uh, mini gastric sleeve uh, single incision. We can do the gastric sleeve to one one port uh, under the belly button. Um, ruin wide gastric bypass, mini gastric bypass, uh, duodenal switch, and SADIS, which are more um, complex surgeries, but patients that are very big. Um, we have revisionals, as we said, and we have endoscopic therapy, right? Endoscopic is it's, uh, the technology is improving, and some of the surgeries can be done through endoscopy only, so no scars, no surgery. So, so it has its indications, but it helps as well. Okay. So, since um, 1991, uh, the um, some uh, uh, the international or national health uh, department uh, established that uh, obesity sur uh, bariatric surgery is the most uh, uh, effective and, and durable treatment for. For obesity, we discuss a little bit more about exercising, diet. Uh, it helps medications. Uh, it helps, but normally when you stop doing them, your weight becomes uh, uh, it, it, you regain the weight. So, um, so bariatric surgery, obviously, you have to be follow. It's we we I tell my patients it's a big push, but you still have to make some diet, exercise, but they go by the hand. But this is the most durable and effective treatment. Uh, uh, for for your health. Uh, we're gonna uh, discuss a little bit about gastric sleep surgery. I was uh, telling you this is the most um, um, done surgery all over the world, bariatric surgery. Um, at first it was uh, a part of a two-step uh, surgery. So they just went in and, and cut the stomach. They take like 80, 25% of it and then uh, patients that were very big, obviously, and then they wait a couple of months, lose a little bit of weight, return and, and, and continue the surgery. But most of the patients, they, at time of the second uh, procedure, they say, I'm happy, I lost a lot of weight, so I wanna say that way. So so that that's what gastric sleeve was born. Right now it's very effective. Obviously, well, you have to do some changes in nutritional behavioral as with every medical surgery. So, um, but he has uh, his, his pros. We can say that it's a quick, uh, easy surgery, can be revised if it if, if fails. Um, we go directly into the stomach, so no rewriting of the incesting done. And um, the, the cons that we can tell is that uh, if previously patient ha has a lot of acid reflux, bad acid reflux, so with the surgery, because we're gonna leave a tiny portion of the stomach, pressure inside that small stomach increases, so patients can have acid reflux still after. But um, 
but it's it's a, a very effective surgery. Okay. So normally, um, to tell you what what we do is that obviously we're gonna take like 80, 85 percent of your stomach. Um, the first um, function is that restriction, restrictive. So small stomach, you're gonna eat less, you're gonna feel full very fast. Um, the part of the stomach that we take out produces a lot of hormones. Uh, most known one is, is ghrelin, that it's called a hunger hormone. It goes into your brain. Normally, this is produced when you're when you have an empty stomach. So it 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 it's produced. It goes to your brain and causes you that being cheating that at that craving. Uh, sensation. So after taking that part of the stomach out, your body's going to produce it much less and you're not going to have that hunger sensation. Okay. So those are the, the two goals. Um, the single incision gastric sleeve is, is the same on the inside is the same. Uh, but on the, out, on the outside, we are just going to do one incision. It's a little, a little bigger incision, but it's, it's under the belly button. So obviously this has its indications. It is for a patient that has a uh, um, low BMI index and uh, some factors has, has to be covered like the size of the liver because you're laying down your liver on top of your stomach if you have, have a big liver so it's better to convert into a traditional sleep but it, it has some static uh, um, uh, um, improvements than the traditional sleep okay um the endoscopic gastric sleeve that, that we were uh, telling, this is uh, brand new. So um, with the technology and, and, and equipment, with the en endoscope, we can put stitches from the inside. So this is just an endoscopy. You do slice sedation, um, go through the, through the endoscope, and then we put stitches on your stomach. So it's like application from the inside of, of the stomach. So it's, it's seen that it, um, it helps. Um, it could um, you could regain weight later on, but uh, but for for it has its indications and patients they can lose weight. Sometimes uh, if patient regain weight, well we can do a, a, a traditional sleep. So okay, and it has the advantages of of just it's an endoscopy. You don't have scars. Uh, the room way gastric bypass. Th this is. Uh, Still, but uh, since the beginning, like 1950s, it was open surgery. It's considered the the gold standard. So, um, when uh, laparoscopic it, it it advanced, so it was becoming a uh, more popular. Um, what we do in the in the gastric bypass in the room? Why we're gonna go to your stomach and we're gonna cut the proximal portion. That's we're gonna we're gonna call it the the gastric pouch. Um, the rest of the stomach stays in there. The, the second step, we're gonna go to the intestine since the beginning, and we're gonna count uh, a portion is like six to eight feet average. We're gonna cut the intestine down there. We're gonna take the distal limb, bite it into that pouch, into the small stomach, and the other limb, we, we connect it into the, into the same intestine. So it looks like a Y. So the, the function of this is we're gonna have that portion of the intestine that's gonna be bypassed. Food is gonna go to the last portion of the intestine. So food is not gonna get absorbed are going to get uh, calories, but vitamins and, and minerals as well. So that's the function of small absorptive that we call it. So it, it has this pros that, uh, well, it's a bigger push. It's, it, it can help you uh, longer time and, and, be and better for um, losing weight. Um, and, uh, well, we've seen that uh, obesity has a lot of uh, uh, diseases, related diseases, comorbidities. Uh, diabetes, high blood pressure, sleep apnea, cancers, um, um, a lot of a lot of uh, uh, diseases that after surgery they decrease. Or we've seen that most of the patients that are taking the medication they get rid of all those medications. So that's that's a, a huge success. And uh, the cons that we can say is that um, well, there's a a syndrome that's called dumping syndrome, since food is gonna go to, this, to, that to that pouch and then directly into the intestine. So the intestine normally doesn't know how to handle uh, 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 the food as it is. Normally it gets to the intestine pre-digested. So uh, it could happen that the intestine liberates a lot of hormones and you cause it to, to sweat, sometimes even to faint, high, uh, your, uh, high, uh, your um, 
well so some of them even even with the sleeve you can he can have that but it's mostly on on the um on the room wide bypass so that decreases if you eat not a lot of carbs not a lot of protein and you eat slowly if you do that it's very rare that you can have that dumping syndrome okay so normally um patients send their uh their health questionnaires and uh and some patients they want to have the gastric sleep some others the room why some other mini gastric so normally um we check on them and 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 we we say yes but then after as they come we can check your background and and questions uh, uh a little bit more um more deeply and sometimes we tell for you it's better to do the the, the gastric bypass for you a uh, gastric sleeve it's 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 enough it's better um so so we individualize each uh, uh treatment for for each patient so so normally if we can if we can go uh, or not uh we were saying that if, if patients have bad acid reflux uh, prior to the surgery so we we recommend a gastric, a gastric bypass if patients have a low bmi uh female patients they they want to get pregnant in the future so we recommend a, a gastric sleep so so but um we're gonna see all of your case and and tell you what's best for you at the time you come here The mini gastric bypass is a uh, um, it's a, a gastric bypass, but with differences in in the technique. Um, this is uh, we call it in surgery an omega loop uh, instead of a, a room Y. Um, omega loops we've been doing in surgery since long time ago, but recently they start uh, gaining uh, um, uh, gaining. Oh, they started doing it a little bit more. Dr. Rudrich uh, from US they started he started doing it. And uh, the results were were amazing. Um, FDA just approved it like ten years ago. So from for now, the results is the patients decrease the same weight uh, or even a little bit faster than the room Y. The difference in this is it it should be called a, a one anastomosis gastric bypass. Uh, we do the pouch that's a little bit longer than the room Y, and then we go to the intestine the same uh, six to eight feet. But the difference is we do not cut the intestine down there. We take it as it is. And bite it into that into that pouch, so it's called an omega loop. So it's called mini because it's uh, it's instead of doing two cuts, two suture rings, uh, it's just one. So it's uh, like fifteen to twenty minutes less surgery. So that's why it's called. Um, we have to see if patients do not have uh, a bad uh, acid reflux. If, if that's the case, it's better to do a wound. Why? And uh, patients can still have dumping syndrome, marginal ulcers. That uh, the same with the wound. Why? But uh, but we take care of it uh, with the diet. Stop smoking after surgery. So so we give all indications to patients. Mm -hmm. So uh, the same uh, when when you get here, we we uh, tell you which one would be the best for you. Um, normally, in terms of losing weight, both of them are almost the same. Uh, same results. Uh, only the mini gastric bypass could have more risk of acid reflux after, um, but both of them could be could be revised, could be revisable, and uh, and the results are almost the same. Okay. We have the uh, DS, the duodenal switch. Uh, we build uh, build pancreatic uh, diversion. Um, and the side is this, this are, are a little bit more complex surgery. It's kind of like, uh, like a bypass, but instead of bypassing a portion of the intestine, we're going to bypass almost everything, uh, uh, all of it. So just leaving like around eight feet, uh, 10 feet of intestine total, uh, small intestine. In this case, we, we do the, the anastomosis in the duodenum. That's what it's called, duodenal switch. And you have a uh, less risk of uh, of um, of dumping syndrome, and um, and well, it a little bit more risk of uh, diarrhea, uh, malnutrition after. But this is indicated in patients they have to lose weight fa very fast because of any heart condition, any problem. So, but it's a, a strong tool as well. Mm -hmm.
Okay, so just a little bit of uh, of the implementations that, that we've done. Uh, COVID hit us by, got us by surprise to all of us. And at first we stopped doing surgery, but then we started taking all, all, all measures, uh, extreme measures, and uh, we continue doing surgery safely. And we see we still are. Um, we're still uh, taking all all uh, uh, precautions, all measures, and uh, so so you can be your health can be um, uh, taken care of. So, okay. We still are wearing masks right now. Since um, uh, World World Health Health Organization, they. Um, I say it's not no no epidemic anymore. So so we use it still, but not as as uh, as before. Uh, still, we take care of social distancing. Um, right now, we it's not the, the hospital is not very crowded. That's why companions they just came for a while, but not, not staying here. And uh, and we take care of uh, ask a patient have their vaccination. So it's very important. A common question is that uh, half ask and I return to work. Normally, uh, to return to work is going to be based on um, of the type of surgery already and the type of work that you do. If normally, if it's we recommend in general like two to three weeks, but the, it's going to depend. If you have a desk job, uh, we recommend two weeks. Some patients at a week they're returning to to work normally. Um, we have some lifting restrictions. So if your if your job uh, requires to lift heavy things to pull yourself up, uh, so we recommend around three weeks, sometimes a little bit more. We recommend patients to return to work, start doing slow work, uh, keep a bottle of water with you, taking small sips because you can get dehydrated a little bit faster. Um, but yeah, normally it's gonna depend on the type of work that you do. Okay, I appreciate it. Thank you so much for explaining all that, I'm taking time. Um, I'm gonna just finish up here by going over the financing. We do have a couple of companies that like uh, United Credit that we work with. Also, there are sites like Super Money that we have a link on our website too. It's more like a personal loan, not a medical loan. You can try those. E-financing, United Medical Credit, like I mentioned, and places like SoFi, even like your bank and places like that, you can look into getting a loan. The only suggestion or recommendation is don't apply for too many, maybe more than two, uh, places don't put application because they check your uh, credit and it will hit your credit. So you won't be able to get a loan at all. Um, we talked about MTI, which is the medical tourism insurance. So we, talk, we work with Global Protective Solutions. This is a top company for this type of insurance. And we have got the rate down to $149. And this basically um, covers you for a lot of things, including surgical complication. And uh, as you see, uh, it has certain benefits. And again, is this is something you may want to have Instead of, you know, it's always say it's good to have it and not use it, but need it and don't have it. And uh, basically, uh, last thing we want to touch base is our bariatric vitamins, which is Emerge Bariatrics, nutrition and vitamins and uh, minerals are huge in the post-op recovery. Uh, certain procedures like bypass and DS, you are required to take vitamins for pretty much life to make sure 
Um, you know, your bone density doesn't get affected. Your nerves don't get affected. The same thing for sleep, at least uh, the first two years, stick to bariatric vitamins. The good thing about bariatric vitamins is they give you the exact combination of the minerals and uh, components that you need. And you're not taking less of one or more than what you need. So it's exactly what you need. The composition is made based on ASMBS and these high quality vitamins. It comes in soft chew, chewable, drinkable, and cast. So basically, now we are opening for Q and A. Um, one thing that we need to mention is qualification of our surgeons. Our surgeons like um, Dr. Gutierrez, he belongs to um, organizations in US, but most of them are certified in Mexico. And certification in Mexico, whether you are a surgeon or a hospital is according to the international standards. We are experiencing that with our building a hospital. We have to go through the same scrutiny, the same standards that the rest of the world, including US. You know, when they talk about JCI certification or a center of excellence, any surgical center that is made and is approved by the Mexican government, which we call COFEPRIS, is has to comply with the same standard that is the rest of the world, including US is, is complying with. And the same thing with our uh, surgeons. If there are surgeons certified, board certified, or like in case of Dr. Gutierrez, when he's double board certified, he has to go through certain exams and requirements to get his license. So um, so about our center again, there's been a lot of questions. We are trying to, of course, you know, it's a construction. There's a lot of components that needs to happen for this to start, but we're looking probably four weeks from now. But again, you know, it could be a little longer, hopefully less, but that's what we're looking at. At this point, we're working on Me Doctor Hospital which we've been working in so, since 2012. Um, we see a lot of uh, people coming from Tennessee, Georgia, uh, Alberta, and saying hi to us. We appreciate that. I saw one of our, your past patients that, oh, Lance, of course. He said that you did his surgery in August of 2020 and you changed his life. Thank you, Lance. We appreciate you. Um, and we'll take care of yourself. So I'm just going over the questions one at a time. Um, so let's go back. If I have, um, Stacy is asking, if I have high blood pressure, will I have to do an EKG beforehand? Um. Yeah, well, it would be better. Normally, to all patients, when they arrive, we do a pre-op evaluation. So they're going to take an EKG, an EKG uh, down here, your, your uh, lab work, um, and uh, and um, uh, internist is going to go through all your, your records, your, your medical history, and, uh, and do a pre-op evaluation. Most of the patients are good to go uh, for surgery, but some of them, sometimes we need an echocardiogram some specific. So, so if any problem we encounter before the surgery, so we take all testings. And even some patients, they have like an arrhythmia, um, some problems, they, they have to return back to U.S. to, to have treat, a proper treatment for their health. Sometimes we have some cases, minor, very few, but still. So we're going to be taking care of your problems. That's right. Yeah, so, so I'm just going to add to this. Uh, oh. We do all the pre-op 
uh, pre-op tests once you arrive. But one thing we recommend you do, especially for patients who are going through revision, is to do a blood test before you come. The blood test basically shows your hemoglobin. Hemoglobin is important to have hemoglobin uh, maybe 14 and high, because if you don't, when you come there, now we have to do blood, blood transfusion and delays your surgery. So knowing that you will take care of it before you come. So that's the one thing we recommend you do. Victoria is asking how many sleeve to revisions have you done? Mm, maybe I don't have the, the exact number, but uh, but yeah, more than a hundred and fifty to uh hundred uh revisions of of uh, it's becoming more more common because uh, uh patients that had the gas uh, a long time ago they they are, are regaining weight and and the best revision to do that in that case is to convert it into a room wire or, or a mini gas bypass so so we've been doing them a, a lot recently. I'm not sure what this user is asking. Uh, do your doctor need to see doctor notes from a prior weight loss surgery? Okay, yeah. Now, some patients, they, they sometimes they can send their, their prior uh, records. It will be better to if we can see them. A lot of patients, they don't have them uh, at hand, so so we don't not able to see it. But if we have them, uh, it will be better to plan the, the next surgery. It is. This patient is asking that I have changed my lifestyle and started eating plant-based vegan and still have issues with weight loss. Would I have to change my eating habits again to accommodate any surgical needs? Um, no, well, uh, and that, that question, it will be better answered by a nutritionist or that you can be held by a nutritionist after surgery. Uh, most of them, they don't. Uh, you just have it, uh, keep in mind that you're going to need to take vitamins, minerals, uh, protein, um, but your your doctor can later on do some some blood work to see your vitamin, mineral levels. Um, and if you're held by a nutritionist, that's always always best. And maybe you can continue doing your same diet, vegan diet that you that you're doing doing. Um, Jessica is asking, I've been stable on methadone maintenance uh, therapy for the past eight years. And I need to know how this travel and surgery will interact with my methadone treatment. This patient is coming from Edmonton. Okay. Uh, yeah, well, in that case, since it's a, a control medication, it will be better to bring your own uh, uh, medication. Uh, we have, uh, during your stay here in the hospital, we have uh, 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 painkillers, we have all, all kinds of them, so we can we can treat your pain. But then after you, you have to continue on your regular medication. So, so yeah, it will be better to bring your own, and uh, and uh, later on, hopefully you can decrease the dose, um, and that that will be our goal. Um, one thing that has been asked, maybe I wasn't clear so much, um, was this raffle for this $2,000 off of the package is only good for Dr. Gutierrez. So if you are qualifying with a different surgeon or wanna go with a different surgeon, you may wanna wait for them to be on the webinar because every webinar only offers the discounted surgery for that uh, surgeon only. So this patient, is, uh, this, this user is asking um, how many um, major complications you've had so far. Okay, well, um, obviously, well, every surgeon, if you did surgery, you can have a, a, a complications. Um, world complications or, or globally, there are stated in 1%, 2%, 
in some cases. Um, uh, the good thing is that we, uh, the whole surgeons, we've been having less than 25 uh, cases of, of complications. Um, I don't have the number in mind right now, but it's obviously it's less than 0.5%. And, and um, well, the complication is going to reduce if you follow the indications, keep following the diet, and, uh, and that's going to decrease complications a lot if you, if you take care. Of course, the 0.5% complication rate is not, we didn't count, we counted all different ones, even like reading and stuff like that. So major complications, it'd be very, very few. Um, I don't know, but we hardly have major complications. Um, same with Dr. Gutierrez. So these are like, you know, maybe sometimes you get wound infection or irritation or things like that. We count all those as complication side effects. Um, I've had the ESG back in 2018 and will I qualify for sleep? Uh, yes, yes, you will. Actually, uh, two days ago, I did a patient that uh, same same case. It had a previous ESG, um, uh, and we we were able to do the the traditional gastric sleep without any any further problems. Lance is one of our past patients with Dr. Gutierrez. is is offering his help on Facebook. So again, we have so many past patients that are out there helping our future patients. Again, another patient from another user from uh, Louisiana is saying hello. I mean, we're getting a lot of different areas today join us, which is great to see. Um, wow, from Arkansas, Marisa. Hi, Marisa. Welcome and good to have you. Um, Ohio, wow. Okay, so I'm a type 2 diabetic and I'm taking three types of insulin. What is that handled? How is this handled during pre surgery, liquid diet, and directly post surgery? Okay, uh, well, um, well, do, as you get here, uh, we're going to be taking care of it. Um, obviously patients that we are doing, uh, blood samples. Okay. Um, with hourly and, and we're taking care of it. Normally we recommend, uh, for our patients to continue on their previous, uh, medication as it is, but you head back to your primary care doctor. So, so he can be the one telling you how to decrease it. Uh, our goal is to get rid of all of them. And, um, and obviously, uh, prior to coming back to coming and doing the, the liquid diet. So talking to your doctor that you're going to do that. So maybe he, he or she can increase the dose and, um, and uh, take care of it. But yeah, 90% of patients, a little bit more, they get rid of the uh, insulin and, and, and uh, diabetes medication. So, yes. So, the question is about us. So, NBC is a facilitator that is a corporation in California in the U.S. The surgeries are actually performed in Mexico. The surgeons have their own insurance down in Mexico. Um, again, we also offer the MTI to cover for any possible complications or any travel disruption or anything like that. So that's how it works.
So as far as um, COVID test, we recommend you do a COVID test before you come for yourself and companion, just to make sure, you know, you don't have it, you don't get anybody else exposed and you're good to go down there. But we don't require it, but we highly recommend it. Our vitamins are not vegan. Basically the vitamins, it comes in different forms and you really have to try to see which one works the best for you as far as your stomach can tolerate and you don't have any, you know, digestion problem with it or things like that. The chewable is probably the best option. So what are the surgery contradictions for VSG other than severe GERD? Okay, um, well, the most common is, is, is GERD. Um, there are uh, contradictions, uh, patients that um, something they have um, gastroparesis, it could be one. If during surgery we encounter, or if you know previously that you have a tumor, <laughs> That's under study. That could be a contraindication as well, but uh, but there are very few. Most of most of the of the surgeries that we do, we we can we can uh, complete them without no problem. So this uh, also we have a recording of this webinar. You just have to um, contact us to get the link to it once we publish it, of course. Um, so we didn't talk about qualifications. So we do surgeries for endoscopic, maybe BMI of more than 27, and surgical, maybe 29, 30. And the age is usually between 15 to 62, 65. Again, is a case by case. You know, there are some older 62s that are really good condition, 65. Even we have done surgeries on 70, but again, you know, it all depends on your, your how good of a health you have at the age you are. So the, the MTI insurance is 45, days after the surgery. So that's a long time because the complications, so the major complications happen within the few days. That's why we keep you in the hospital and we do all the tests we do. We put um, train, we make sure and everything checks out before you leave. That's the most crucial time. Now, if you lift heavy or you don't comply with the diet, there are reasons that you may have complication later on, but those are rare. And those are more like a not intermediate, maybe like a little bit, like four or five days on. And 45 days is a long time for, for post-op to be covered. So when you, when you are released, you get a copy of you surgical report. So they give it to you at the time when you release from the hospital. So the average price for sleeve and bypass is about 45, that depends on the surgeon. It could be as low as 43.95 and it could be as high as 5,000. Depends on the surgeon bypass from 57 to 62. Now here's the thing. If you are booked with any type of surgery and you go down there and you still talk to the surgeon and they 
tell you or you decide that you want a different type of surgery based on your condition, we can always give you what's best for you and switch you. So don't worry about that. Hello, Brooke from Wyoming. Uh, I appreciate all the people today from all over the place. They're commenting and saying hi to us. Um, of course, it's, it's completely okay to come by yourself because from the time you arrive to the time you departure, you're never alone. You're always with, of course, other patients. You are with our coordinators. You are with our driver staff. So you're never alone. So don't feel like you need to bring somebody. If you feel that you need to have somebody with you, that's a different story. Uh, but you really don't need it. Dr. Gutierrez does not perform ESG. Again, every surgeon offers a certain expertise and that's why we have seven team of surgeons offering all variety of procedures. So they're asking how long does the gastric sleeve operation last? Um. Well, it, it, it depends, but normally it takes like 40, 45 minutes. Sometimes it's a little bit uh, more, sometimes less. It could be done sometimes in 25 minutes, uh, but that depends on, on different factors, BMI, um, if we encounter a hiatal hernia, but usually it takes 40, 45 minutes. Okay, so if you lose weight and you end up with extra skin, um, so we work with Mexico Cosmetic Center brand. Mexico Cosmetic Center basically is a cosmetic part of Mexico Bariatric Center that handles their plastics. They do anything from facelift to mummy makeover. Mummy makeover is uh, most uh, prominent or most you know popular procedures that we offer. And remember, when you are a post-bariatric patient, your skin, your situation is not the same as a normal somebody who is doing for, for bariatrics without the weight loss surgery. So you need the surgeons to be able not only be board certified, but also be reconstructive surgeon. And that's what we work for. But you are, I typed it here, MexicoCosmeticCenter.com, do the application there, and we get you hooked up with a surgeon that can handle your case. So which medications are typically allowed to, to continue to take up until surgery? Okay, uh, most of the medications are, are taken uh, uh, as it is regularly. We, um, we put a extra a special care on, on blood thinners. You have to, depending on the blood thinner that you that you're taking, um, uh, aspirin, uh, two weeks, ten days prior to the surgery, uh, blood thinners, and con contraceptives. If you're taking uh, that, normally we recommend to stop to stop them like two weeks before the surgery. But other than that, you can take your medication as it is. And obviously, the day of the surgery will turn medications like like um, uh, diabetic medications that you have to not to take that at that day. But... Um, I was typing something here, very important. Um... Sorry, I kind of lost. Um... Okay, so how long after having a baby do you have to wait until it gets surgery? Okay, normally it will depend if you're lactating, well, obviously until you stop. Uh, if not, six months after uh, um, your, your childbirth, you can, you can have surgery. I have type two diabetes 
and I was diagnosed two years ago. Is there any restriction? Uh, from diabetes, it's not. Obviously, it's better that you have it controlled. Um, but uh, one of the indications for surgery is uh, um, to decrease or getting rid of uh, diabetes. So, so it's one one common indication. So, from diabetes, is no no restrictions. So this, so basically, one of the we always talk about well, weight loss surgery. You lose weight. You um permanently, rapidly, but also all the comorbidities like the associated disease that comes with it. Most patients, they if they're using insulin, they either don't have to use insulin or they have to use very minimal after the surgery. Of course, you know, maybe the bypass is more like cure for um, diabetes type two and things like that, but they all function the same way and has all these benefits from reducing cancer, cardiovascular disease, joint problems. These are all the uh, basically it's like a bonuses that comes with weight loss surgery. So talk, can you talk about high hernia and how you manage when you find one during the surgery? Okay, yeah, sure. Um, high hernia, it's common in, in overweight patients. Up to 30% of them can, can develop a high hernia. And that's because overweight increases the, the uh, intra-abdominal pressure. So um, whenever we're doing a, a, a bariatric surgery and we encounter one, it's better to, to dissect and repair it because if not, you can, you can still have uh, acid reflux or that could get worse. So, so what we do is that we repair the hiatal hernia and, uh, and combine that with losing weight and your diet, that's gonna, that's gonna decrease or, or, or go away. Okay, so we talked about the prices and what our packages cover. So when they asked me, well, what is the price? We said, okay, let's say $43.95 for gastric sleep. Now this is the base price. What are the extra charges that you can encounter? So let's say high tail hernia. One thing that Dr. Gutierrez just mentioned, if they find that you need a repair for your high tail hernia, they actually do it during the surgery and it's extra fee of $395. That's really, not only is a good deal, is really a great um, option to have that the, you don't have to go through another surgery to fix that so you won't have side effects later on. Um, so that's one of the reasons you may get reflux after sleep if they don't repair the high to hernia. Um, things like that, yes, it's an extra charge. If you are, or our, let's say our medication package is a standard package, but if you need maybe a little bit more of um, nausea medication or pain medication, there's gonna be a slight more fees for those. It's not very much, but those are the ones that you may have to pay extra. So also, the, the MTI insurance only, let's say if you have high toe hernia, that's a pre-existing condition. The MTI is not gonna cover that. MTI is only covering what the outcome of the surgery is. So, so now you know like what are the expected extra fees and what is the, the situation with the MTI. And then when they say, yeah, this is a surprise, it is a surprise extra fee, but it is, uh, is, is something that your body needs, but you didn't know about. So it's not really, yeah, it is a surprise, but it's not like, it's not a bogus charge. It's just like something that it needed to be done and we got it done. So you just have to pay for it. So basically, our surgeon liaison and our doctors tell you which 
medication, if you're taking certain medication, when to stop and also make sure you bring all your medications with the bottle, with the label, with you to Mexico. That's very important. So they, they be, they're asking about your anesthesiologist, what's the qualification, who does the sedation, and if you can explain that. Okay, uh, yeah, all of our um, anesthesiologists are certified as well, and uh, they have a lot of expertise in, in specifically in bariatric uh, patients. Um, there's a lot of hospitals in the U.S. here in Mexico as well that they have technicians that they do the the sedation or they do the, the, the intubation, all that. Here in here in, in our facility, uh, the anesthesiologist does, does all the work, does everything. So and um, so he's he's always uh, taking care, and uh, and they they have a lot of expertise in in patients like that, like this. So the reason we didn't have the BMI over 60 to 80 in the chart of BMI is basically we didn't have room. But I, like I mentioned, there is no limitation of what your BMI is. We could do a BMI all the way to 100. That's a, that's a really high BMI. Those are, you know, like the shows we look at. 700, my 600 pound life or 700 pound life. These are patients that are, are, you know, way overweight. And so there's no limit of what the BMI is we can do. So or they're saying is mini bypass is really an effective revision for sleep. Okay, well, yeah, if you uh, previously you have a, a had a sleep and uh, you regain weight, yeah, uh, uh, this this is gonna add a malabsorptive uh, treatment to to the previous sleep, and um, and mini gastric bypass compared to Ruin Y, uh, we saw this is world world uh, results, uh, world start, world studies, and the effective of both of them are the same. So they're very effective. Obviously, you still have to follow indications, do a diet. But, uh, but it's going to help uh, a lot, yes. So you're asking, can I be provided the surgical room and staff protocols for sterilization? I don't, I don't get, I don't got that. So they're asking what are, how you do the sterilization and what is the what is the protocol? Okay, so as as in every uh, operating room, so they take you into the OR, uh, uh, previously uh, prepare, um, and uh, and in the OR we cover you. We're gonna clean all the uh, surgical area with iodine or or soap, um, and then after we cover you with sterile uh, dressings and. Um, and it's it's the same as, as ORs in the in the world. So, just to talk about you know the new surgical center, the hospital that we have we have the the highest standard of um, equipment technology, like we will have steam, plasma, and gas esterization. And they're all the best equipment you can get, the highest technology, and you know the whole sterilization is a is a major part of surgical rooms. So yes. So for just to make sure we're clear on that, for plastic surgery for skin removal, you really have to wait at least one and a half years. So, yeah, so it's good to, to wait until your weight is stable and you're not 
losing or gaining weight, and that's when you want to do it. Um, another question is, is passport required to cross the US? We highly recommend you have a passport card or a passport book. And of course, you know, there are days that everybody goes through, no problem. You find that one officer that had a bad day, or, you know, they just pull you and you're basically in secondary and waste about two hours. I'm currently on Manjaro once a week injection for insulin resistance. Do I need to stop a day before surgery or will I be given enough time to stop taking it? Uh, they're gonna they're gonna tell you when, but normally you can you can keep uh, doing it. Actually, there's a, a study right now that they're doing uh, uh, GLPs, which is uh, uh, the family. Um, so they're doing the surgery and continue with GL GLP. So that that increases uh, the success a little bit. But uh, but then later on, I'm, I'm positive that you're gonna you're gonna discontinue that and just with the surgery and losing weight. Is going to be enough for your uh, sugar levels to be to be normal weights. So um, we have um, if you have any question for a specific question for um, our marriage bariatric vitamins, you can talk to our Christ Christine or. Dietitian on our staff, and um, they can give you specifics like if you need iron or calcium or just the multi is good. A website on this chat. I'm not sure which one. So we have <laughs> about at least 50 more questions to um, I had surgery April 25th with Dr. Gutierrez. I'm sleeping a lot better and I'm able to walk and breathe a lot better. Again, you know, these are all the benefits of, so sleep apnea is huge. Um, that you get get away with after the surgery. You don't have that sleep apnea problem anymore. Sleep apnea is a huge problem. Uh, oh, there was a question that they asked, should I bring my CPAP with me? Okay, yeah. Um, we have uh, CPAP machines here in the hospital, but it's always better to bring your own because you're used to it. and. Uh, and sometimes uh, uh, we need it after surgery to continue on that, but uh, but uh, hopefully you will get rid of that machine after surgery. That's our goal. So for the recommended blood test prior to travel, is it CMP or CBC? Usually what we do is the CBC, uh, they complete. Um, and uh, and sometimes if we encounter any anything that we need to, to look uh, even more, so we do a lot of testing, but, uh, but usually with the CBC is. Um, hello from Orlando, Florida. I need to have lose weight and lower my BMI for my hip replacement. How soon after surgery can I have another surgery? Uh, I think you mean that uh, after having the bariatric surgery, having the, the hip replacement? Yeah. Um, or if it was yeah. the opposite. Uh, normally, it will be better to wait like around six months. And that will be mostly depending on 
well, a hip replacement is a, is a big surgery. So sometimes you, you end up with anemia or, or another problem. So that would be better to, to be corrected first. But, uh, but yeah, normally, usually at that time, it's better to do it. Okay, so they're asking, do you provide detailed medical bills that allow me to submit? I believe so. If you want a detailed invoice to submit to HSA or, or your insurance, we provide that with a fee of $45, but you can get that after surgery. A lot of people do that to get some kind of money from um, Yeah, we went over that. So what medication do you take with you uh, at the time you release from the hospital you take with home? Okay, so uh, we're gonna give you, usually we do uh, antibiotic, just prophylactic during surgery. And you're gonna go home with with, uh, 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 with that medication. Uh, we do pain nausea medication, uh, omeprazole, uh, which is like Prilosec. Uh, we we do that a couple of weeks, um, and then you your regular medication as you use it, as you take it. So this patient is asking, I am allergic to the contrast. Die. Do you have another way of verifying if the surgery was successful? Uh, yes, yes, we do. Um, usually, we have to see if you're uh, uh, allergic to to barium contrast. This is a different kind of uh, contrast, it's not barium. It's uh, uh, iodine base. Uh, but yeah, if you're if you're allergic to to all of that, yeah, we can we can do some other testing too, just to to make sure everything's fine. Yes, all the prices are in US dollars for Canadian. They're asking, is bypass best for hiatal hernia? Um, you can, we can do it on both. We, you, can, you can repair the hernia in, in any surgery, even do the gastric sleep. Um, obviously, if patient they have, well, we have to see if they have a, a pathological acid reflux prior to the surgery. If so, it's better to do a run wide acid bypass. But uh, but most of the patients, they have uh, 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 acid reflux because of overweight, because of a, of a hiatal hernia. So repairing that, doing the sleep and following the indication, the diet, it's enough. So we have to see what's your case. Okay, yeah, sir. What is the good iron level? Um, well, that, that depends on the uh, on your uh, age and sex. Uh, normally, what, what we uh, search for is your hemoglobin levels. And uh, if they're normal, there's no need to, to do more uh, uh, testing. If they're low, we see if, we see if your iron levels are, are low when you need to take more. So does supplements like the over-counter supplements has to be stopped before the surgery or they uh, have to bring it with them? It will be, well, it will be better to stop them because there, some of them are, are like plant-based. They have like uh, garlic and, and we see that some plants can make you uh, a, a little bit of a bleeding tendency or to bleed a little bit more. So it will be better to stop them and then right after you continue with your bariatric uh, uh, vitamin and minerals. I've had four back surgeries 
with two fusions and suffer from neuropathy in one surgery, my heart stopped. Can I still have bypass? Um, yeah, uh, it will be better to to have a, a, a cardio clearance and um, and for the cardiologist to check to check you out. And then if everything comes fine, yeah, we can do the pre-op evaluation here and and yeah, you can you can still have the surgery. Well, I'm going to go over the before after pictures we, we, which we have hundreds and thousands of them. Um, there is no limit of where, what you can accomplish with this type of procedure. Uh, a lot of our patients, we see that they become actually a bodybuilders and they start running, you know, a marathon and doing things like that. So you can turn your life upside down or change your life 360 degrees by doing this procedure. And the sky is the limit. Is what is a tool that you acquire and it's what you do with it is important. I think we have pretty much answered all the questions that there were. That now we are trying to do the raffle and I have the raffle winner and it's Olivia Sanders. Olivia Sanders, I'm going to let you talk to share your um, where you are and how you learned about us and tell more about yourself and what the situation is with surgery. Go ahead. Okay, can you hear me? Yes, congratulations. Thank you. Um, I am from Kansas City, Missouri. Great. And I have learned about you guys from um, individuals at my work. Um, I was discussing it with them the other night that I was planning on having surgery and um, they. it turns out they had gone to your facility and highly recommended you all. Um, so I've just always battled with my um, weight for quite some time now and just want to take control of my life again. Awesome. Again, congratulations. Uh, we will be contacting you. Or you or you're welcome to actually call us 855-768-7247 and talk to our coordinators today to get your schedule. Appreciate everyone else that joined us. Dr. Gutierrez, I appreciate you. Thank you so much for spending your time with us. And we'll see you another time in next month. Take care. Goodbye. Bye.